Hello and welcome to your introduction video to your online class for spring 2018. This is the first video that will introduce you to the class. Uh, your class is listed under four different call numbers. It would either be under CACT 8410, English 8410, LLS 4926 or LLS 8926. All of them would be sections 850 indicating that they're completely online. Uh, because the class is, is listed across four different uh, call numbers, you will sometimes hear it referred to not by your particular call number. Don't panic. It's just my easy way of referring to it quickly. The most common number I'll use is the CACT 8410, which is Critical and Creative Thinking. Um, my name is Professor Ramon Guerra. I'm from the Department of English. This is an English-based class, literature, uh, and the study of literature. Uh, I am housed in Arts and Sciences Hall, room 192 in the main English office. Uh, my office number is 192D. For those of you that happen to be on campus, uh, I will have in-person office hours, which will, I will get to in a little bit. Um, but since this is an online course, I'll also be available uh, a designated time during the week for uh, what we'll call virtual office hours, primarily be just by uh, email. Um, this video is going to be your introduction to the class, the way that it's going to work since it's an online class and since it's on Canvas, which is fairly new, uh, I know it's new for me, I imagine it's new for many of you, uh, this video will explain the way that we're going to work our way through it. I'll put out a disclaimer right now that says this is my first time working with Canvas. The last time that I taught this course, I taught it through the Blackboard uh, learning management system. So my videos and my uh, lectures and PowerPoints, notes, etc. were all designed for that system. So I've tried to convert them as best as I can. Uh, occasionally, you'll hear in some of my video lectures a reference to Blackboard. Um, ignore that. Simply replace it with Canvas. Uh, you may also hear uh, a date that was specific to the time where I made a lecture. Uh, ignore that one and, and always refer to the uh, syllabus and schedule in front of you. I will occasionally make a, uh, an intro video uh, at a particular section uh, indicating what we need to do in terms of assignments and topics, etc. And I will always alert you by email and by announcement function um, to check out what's new. Uh, as we get into the, the syllabus and the schedule, you'll see the way that I've designed the course. It will work uh, on a week-by-week -week module system. And as we dig deeper into the structure, uh, we'll show you um, the nuts and bolts of, of what you will have to do every week. So uh, if you're already asking yourself or asking me, uh, can I work at my own pace? Uh, the short answer is no. Long answer is yes, you can work at your own pace over the week, but once you get the week's work done, you cannot go on uh, to the next, next week. I want you all on the same week at the same time. So the first thing I'll have you do and I'll remind you again that I am uh, new to Canvas, and so uh, if there are any problems with any content getting to you, any files, any videos, etc., always just email me. Uh, the course itself is not going to be driven by the medium. Uh, if we have problems, I will simply you know, make the best effort to get things to you in an old-fashioned email way, etc., uh, I don't want to be limited by, by the new uh, system and my not having every little intricacy down. Um, so if you go to your Canvas page and you log in to our class, uh, you will see at the top, and I'm going to move this camera window so 
don't pay attention to my eyes moving back and forth. There will be a syllabus module up at the top that will have a syllabus and a course schedule uh, which you can click on and which will take you right to the document, PDF version of the document. Now I've got a printed out version over here that I'm going to be referring to so I, I don't have to close my camera. But you can follow along, you can print one off, however is best for you. Uh, I'm going to go through the syllabus and I uh, am not going to read everything word for word. You can certainly do that on your own. I'm going to hit some of the high points. I'm going to really spend a lot of time explaining in this video how the class will work. And then as we move along, we'll talk more uh, content for the course. So if uh, I have the syllabus in front of me. You can see at the top the headings for all four of the sections, CACT 8410, ENGL 8410, LLS 8926 and 4926. The name of the class, Immigration, Migration, and Diaspora, Critical Approaches and Theories of Movement in Literature. Or for shorter purposes, you oftentimes just see it referred to as Literature of Displacement. Um, underneath that, you have my uh, contact information. Uh, In-person office hours are listed there. Uh, if you happen to be on campus and you want to meet with me, certainly. Uh, and then I have, as I mentioned, a devoted period Wednesday nights from 7 to 8 o'clock where I will be uh, email ready for a virtual office hour session, uh, which uh, I'll respond to you uh, immediately as if we were, we were talking uh, in my office at that time. And then my email address is listed there. You can also email me through Canvas. Um, this will be the primary means of communication since our class is, is online. Uh, underneath that, you've got the, the shortened title of the class and then the eight text, which I've chosen. And as we get into more content uh, in the next few videos, you'll begin to see why these books, why these texts were, were chosen to represent uh, immigration, migration, and uh, other forms of movement throughout the United States and, uh, and other parts of the world. I tried to represent as many different narratives and, and populations as possible. There is a, a bit of a slant towards uh, U.S.-focused uh, displacement, movement, uh, refugee status, etc., uh, but there is also a, a nod to the way that these things have happened globally and speaks to the, the sort of uh, human condition beyond borders. Uh, and we'll, we'll explore some of that in, in our uh, analysis of these texts as we move through them. Um, you'll also notice there that after the text listed, there are various articles uh, posted on Canvas, which... Uh, you will have access to. They'll usually be in the form of a, a, a link to an article or a PDF version of that article. Uh, below that, there are several texts there that I've uh, indicated might be good places to start for research, supplemental uh, analytical texts. Uh, there are lots of others. You know, once you get started thinking about research areas and possibilities, I'm, I'm happy to help you uh, consider other places, other sources that might help you as well. Uh, these are just a few that I'm familiar with that I think might be good places for you to start. Um, after that, you've got the course description. Uh, I will go ahead and just highlight what, what this says. Uh, U.S. experiences of displaced immigrants and migrants. This is the, the, the foremost component of this class, and it's why it, it also has an LLS or Latino Latin American Studies uh, component to it because the primary uh, contemporary version of immigration to the United States has to do with Latin America, Central America, Mexico, and, and whatnot. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. I should also take this time to mention that these videos will primarily be informal. You may see one or two of my kids from time to time. I've got a dog and a cat in the background. I'm going to just try to uh, not uh, 
not break stride, just keep going. We'll, I'm not really all that concerned about being uh, totally formal with these. So if I sneeze here, if I got to take a break, I'm sorry. Um, we'll look at fiction, nonfiction. Um, we'll look at the way that they speak to individual stories as well as the, the groups which they come from and they represent. Uh, significant topics that we will examine include, and there's a list of them there, placelessness, cultural collusion, literacy, discrimination, success, the uh, trope of a rising so-called second generation, and overall identity. Okay, There are a variety of ways that these uh, topics might have political implications, uh, ranging from nativist ideologies, national security concerns. Uh, we will address these as best as we can. And we will use current news and editorial journalism to complement the existing curriculum. So it's a very timely topic. And so it will be obviously informed by the world in which we live in and the, the news cycle and, and opinion and policy, etc. will pertain to topics which our literature will, will understandably uh, bring up. Okay. Um, skip over that that uh, bolded text there which tells you about um, the naming of the class. The course structure, class is totally online. Uh, we'll take the form of video lectures, some written notes that I'll include, obviously reading assignments, some PowerPoint or presentations. You're responsible for maintaining your familiarity with the schedule and structure. Through a variety of means, I will ask questions. I'll relate questions that students will ask. And we will all attempt to answer them by exploring the readings, the film clips, uh, uh, anything else that I include, as well as our own experiences. So this is where I'm going to read verbatim for just a minute because uh, I want to make sure that this is clear and you may have questions on this. Uh, a typical week will involve a reading assignment, a video lecture, occasionally multiple videos. There might be one at the beginning and then one at the halfway point of the week. Occasionally some supplemental reading and then a weekly reading response due by the Friday of that week by 8 p.m. Information for each week will be compartmentalized into a module under the Modules tab on Canvas marked Week 1 or Week 2 and so on. And then you can see the separate course schedule document for the detailed listing. Uh, so by doing this, every, I believe it's Saturday morning, every Saturday morning the week begins. Every Your assignment is made ready to you. What are we going to uh, look at? Uh, for my intro lecture, uh, where can you begin to start thinking about your, your uh, weekly reading response, anything that I, I might point you to to help you consider the topic for that week. Uh, and then you will have all week to do the reading assignment. Sometimes it's, it's not the whole novel or, or the text or whatever. Sometimes it's only a section. Uh, and then by Friday night, 8 p.m., you will have to submit through the Assignments tab on Canvas your uh, weekly reading response. Um, and that will be it. And this will happen 14 times, 15 times. I, I don't know. You can look at, uh, at the details specifically. But that's what the typical week will look like. Occasionally, there will be uh, a second video that I will release like I said, on a Wednesday, maybe to kind of help you along. Um, there might also be one of our uh, special projects due that week. I'll get to those in a minute. Uh, those will all be laid out on the course schedule. Okay. If you look at the class requirements, you can see in addition to that weekly reading and reading response, uh, what the primary assignments are. The semester research project. It's a very standard research-driven essay that you will do and you can look at that more specifically but I've broken it down here into, into elements. The first element is a critical text review which is letter A. Uh, three to four pages uh, you find 
a critical text, maybe two, but I would prefer just one critical text, an analysis of, uh, of a particular idea, an author, a, a, a novel perhaps, uh, that is critical and that it, it provides a perspective and something that you can speak to and, and maybe challenge, maybe riff on, maybe you know, uh, set up uh, in conjunction with some other way of thinking. Uh, you will review this text, three to four pages. You will look at it um, in a way that you will begin to use it for some research agenda of your own. And you'll notice in the notes there, it says you should expect to have about eight to ten secondary sources. This critical text review is only asking you to look at one, possibly two if they're related. Um, this will be due, you see the due date on there, uh, Monday, March 26th, and again, submitted through the Assignments tab on Canvas. Uh, the B component is a detailed outline, which is one to two pages. And details uh, should be as specific as possible, laying out a pattern, an organizational structure that your essay will, will uh, build upon. Uh, you can obviously change. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's an idea. It's something that's going to give you um, a path to get where you want to go. And this is due uh, a little bit closer to the end of the semester. It's Monday, April 16th. And I will uh, return those to you as quickly as possible so you can get some feedback on your projects before you turn in your final draft which is uh, element C of this uh, seminar project, 10 to 12 page research paper, which is 30% of your final grade, and it's due uh, on Friday, April 27th by 8 p.m. Uh, number two under the requirements are the current event summaries uh, review. You will have to do two of these, and their due dates are listed, I believe, on the course schedule. Two to three pages, you're going to find a contemporary uh, issue related in some sort of uh, journal, newspaper, you know, reputable, these sort of things, uh, and respond to it, review it. Um, two to three pages, very minimal, but I want you to relate some of uh, what we learn through our reading to contemporary issues, and this is one uh, way to do that. Um, the third component there are those weekly reading responses, which I list here as one to two pages. Uh, so about 500, 600 words. Uh, roughly each week, there will be a total of 10, so there will be a couple weeks where you won't have one of these due. And these are more informal writings just to kind of keep you thinking, getting you to ask questions and, and try out frames of thought. I'll try to respond back to these uh, in order to, so that we can have a, a, a simulated conversation about where you are in your thinking. Um, and these will be a total of 10, which will represent 25% of your grade. The next thing on the list there is the grading breakdown, and you can see how each of these uh, assignments feeds the total 100% uh, of your grade. Uh, after that, there's some uh, items that I, I would like you to just look over on your own. An, artic uh, an article, and uh, 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 I don't want to say a description of plagiarism. Um, certainly, the uh, university has a very strong academic uh, integrity policy. I'll post a link to that on our Canvas page. Um, you can see here, I think this link actually goes to the old one at the moment, so I'll update that. Uh, students with disabilities are encouraged to contact me or the Disability Services Offices. It's a confidential uh, notification to your professors if you have a registered disability and you need some uh, accommodations. don't have to know anything about it. It, it works very uh, uh, smoothly in a lot of ways. Um, if you have already indicated this, I probably have already received notification about a disability. You may just want to check with me if you're concerned at all. Uh, next, there's a statement about reporting sexual misconduct and resources at UNO, uh, places to contact people to reach out to. And then the last item there is a plug for the UNO Writing Center which is on campus. I know this is an online class, but if you happen to make your 
itself to UNO's uh, campus, uh, you are you know, able to use this service, a, a free service to you as a student uh, to help you with any of your writing at any point uh, with any particular goal. So it, it's something I encourage any student to take advantage of. Uh, it's staffed by our English department faculty and students, and they do a wonderful job of working with you uh, from, you know, starting out with a thesis and finding ideas and way to go to polishing, editing, that sort of thing in the end, and then all places in between. So uh, you can you can find their website there and check them out if you need them at any point. They do work by appointment, so I would uh, strongly suggest uh, if you anticipate needing them, you know, getting in touch with them. A good deal before you actually need to turn something in. So plan ahead is what I'm saying. So if you open the, the course schedule document, which is a separate document, again, I've got a printed out version here that I'm going to refer to. You can see the way that each of the weeks is um, laid out for you. It's bare bones here because when you get into the actual uh, modules on Canvas, which I'm going to do right now, and actually, they're not going to be unlocked for you until each uh, each week is completed. So week one will unlock for you Monday, January eighth, and week two will unlock Saturday, January thirteenth, and so on. And so within each of those weeks, you'll find the video. Assignment. Um, uh, I can see week one already has an article that that is uh, supplementary and and hoping to, to give you a little bit of perspective. So just those kinds of things will be laid out in each week. And if you look on the schedule for week one, you'll see uh, January eighth to January twelfth, the video introduction to the syllabus, the course mapping, early discussion of terminology and theories, etc. That's this video. And then you will have uh, a reading assignment, appendices one through three in Mary Pfeiffer's The Middle of Everywhere. It's like 12 pages, so it's very minimal reading for this first week. And then by January 12th, I will ask you to submit a reading response based on The, the Middle of Everywhere uh, appendices that you're going to be reading through. Um, next week, the second week, January 15th is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which if you have an in-person class, you're not in class, but we're an online class, so we kind of function in this, this uh, ill-defined space. So we still will uh, have class, quote-unquote, on that day. You'll begin with a video introduction to Piper, you know, contextualize, contextualizing refugees, all of these terms and everything, and then you'll read 200-plus uh, uh, pages from Pfeiffer's book, and at the end of that week, you will not have a reading uh, response. You'll, you'll see uh, that it, it, it varies from week to week. And you can look down uh, at all the weeks and just get a quick glance at the types of things. You can look at the order of the books that we'll be reading. Um, if you look down, let's see something a little out of the ordinary. Uh, if you look down to week six, You'll see due February 16th by 8 p.m., your first current events review, which is that review over a, a current events article from a journal, a newspaper, etc. That first one is due. So everything that has a due date is on this schedule. Um, if you flip back to the first page of that schedule or you scroll back, uh, you'll see that I, in parentheses, I don't plan on it, but should it be necessary, I reserve the right to alter the syllabus and or the course schedule at any time. Uh, it may happen occasionally. Um, with an online class, it's not as likely to happen because I don't get into long discussions that carry over and stretch our schedule from day to day. But if I ever need to do anything, uh, I will let you know ahead of time. Uh, page numbers listed are, of course, from the editions that I've indicated. If you have different editions, and you're sincerely worried about keeping up exactly with where we are, uh, let me know. Um, again, you'll notice that most of the reading is either 
like half the book or all of the book, etc., because we're going to be week reading on a week by week basis. Um, anything else to note on here? Uh, April 27th, the final research essay is due. You'll have that entire week, in fact, free to research and write. It's uh, dead week or prep week on campus. You will have no assignments that week. You're only polishing, hopefully just polishing and finishing your research essay at that point. Um, I think that is it. That is enough for this first video. It's a little bit longer than I anticipated. I do tend to get a little wordy from time to time. Uh, I will look forward to uh, hearing from all of you. And uh, any of you who are on campus, feel free to stop by. Let me know you're in the class. Uh, I would um, strongly encourage you to make sure you have all the books before we begin. And I will be in touch with you to let you know uh, that the class has officially started uh, on Monday, January 8th. Thanks very much.